We both came on tour at similar times, around 19. He'd already been winning. He'd come straight on it and was already winning national opens. Yes, there it is. One under par, 283, and a remarkable victory. This is a victory illogical, brilliant, and historic. Illogical because here is a champion who today was offline from the tee at the last seven holes. Brilliant through its audacity. Historic because he's the first Spaniard to win and the first Continental since 1907. He had a different style, yeah, completely. We worked chalk and cheese in that way and we knew we were going to be competitive against each other. But we got on. You cast your mind back and think, wow, we used to actually play a lot of practice rounds together. We stood on the range together as well and, and he'd hit some shots and I'd hit some shots and we'd always be watching each other. And he would sneak down and watch me hit balls. I would watch him and he would ask me things I'd ask. So actually we were, we were a lot closer than even I even thought. You know, when he passed, that was a shock to me to how much he respected me on the golf course. Oh, he's hold one at just the right time. He's been searching for that all week. As a competitor, he was a, it was great because you know he looked at he looked at the golf hole a different way. I never forget, you know, you'd stand down and you'd see trees and hills, and he'd think the green is that way. So he'd be teeing it up and hitting the thing that way, and we'd be and I'd hit a five iron off the tee and an eight iron around the corner, and he's hitting driver over everything. Oh, he gives it a tremendous clatter, and that's going miles to the right. Well, I do believe he's away off there and found a car park. That was our two different styles. He was tough to beat, of course, you know, match play, really tough, because he'd be in the trees, still in the trees. You're down the fair and you're thinking, if I'm still going to make a four to beat him, because you know darn well he's going to find a way to, you know, he's still in the hole, even though he's, you can't see him. Gives it a bump up the slope. Oh, and the young Matador is absolutely delighted. And why not? Against all the odds, he takes the outright lead yet again and can't wait to get to the next hole. He hit some wedge shots. He did it to me in Belgium. He hit a wedge shot over a bunker and the ball stopped. He just stopped on the green. I went, why do you do that? Didn't bounce, just went boom. Not plugged, just went boom, like that. Oh, a gem of a shot. A chance for a three. Tevi's been having a bit of a lean time of late for him, but surely now he must have a slight scent of victory in his young nostrils. We were playing in Ireland at Royal Dublin, but he hit a putt, and honest, the ball was there. It was an inch from the hole. I mean, telling stories. And he literally looked at that ball like this, and the ball went and went in. And I looked at Dave McNeely, my caddy, and I said, did you see that? And he said, I did, I saw it. And we went, what was that? Because, it, I mean, seriously, it was like he went, <clears throat> and the ball just did a left turn and went in. And then obviously Gray in the Ryder Cup room, he really did the director of ambiance. He set the tone for the week because there, there was a bit of hatred in there. Because, you know, he got a rum do from the, the media in America and the players as well. So there was a little bit of, little bit of needle, and he, you know, we have to win. We had some great times in there, some, you know, and, and to be part of that battle, to be part of that teams that we, you know, obviously transformed the Ryder Cup to what it is now. Yeah, it makes it very special. Nick Faldo, one up over Curtis Strange, and Faldo playing in a historic match more than anyone in history. For me, we had the, that great Ryder Cup in, in 95, when uh, you know, I managed to win the last two, turn that match around, and we were all in tears. Seve Ballesteros, as emotional as anyone in the European camp. As I said, I didn't really appreciate how much, we, how much respect we had for each other, which was a, which was a shame. We, when, we, when we both captained that Seve Trophy, everybody teed off. We were now on the first tee, just the two of us. And he says, you know, Nick, it's time for us to be friends. And I thought, I said, sure, that's cool. I said, send me one of those hams. I want a big ham. <laughs> but it never happened, unfortunately. <laughs>